Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Let's break down the latest Eagles news and rumors here on a Monday, starting with an update on something that I think a lot of Eagle fans are really curious about why it's been so quiet, and that is, of course, the Zach Ertz current trade situation. Remember, like, a month ago, whenever it was all reported and we talked about it, how, oh, the Eagles are going to try to tr cut or trade Zach Ertz. Oh, the Eagles are working very hard to trade Zach Ertz. Well, check your watches. It's been like a month, and so far, Philadelphia has not traded Zach Ertz. And in the meantime, they've actually saved a lot of money on the cap space. So even though trading or cutting Zach Ertz would go ahead and save Philadelphia $4.95 million in 2021, the Eagles now have like $6.43 million in free cap space. So you don't even need to trade him to get underneath the cap. And so you're starting to kind of wonder, are the Eagles going to end up trading Zach Ertz? And there was a report from Pro Football Network saying they want like a third round draft pick for him. Is that too high? We're going to break it all down here in the latest update regarding Zach Ertz. But it's just weird that you sit back and you go, Okay, they said they were going to trade him. Free agency came and went, so they didn't cut him. Are they waiting for the draft? Maybe that's the case. They want to package trades up on draft day to go ahead and move Zach Ertz. That is at least what NJ.com is saying on regarding uh, trading Zach Ertz. They put an article out just this past week talking about all the different scenarios, and it feels like trading him for a draft pick on draft night, or at least on draft day, maybe day two, could be the most likely scenario. Here's NJ.com on trading Zach Ertz. Quote, the Eagles decide they can't obtain fair value for Ertz during draft weekend. They can simply hold on to him until June 1. Trading him for a 2022 draft pick or releasing him in June would save the Eagles about $8.5 million in cap space this offseason, giving them more room to sign free agents before training camp. End quote. So you could trade him on draft night. You could just go and get a draft pick for him. Or if you wait a little bit, maybe until uh, June 1st, you could get a future draft pick or release him and save, what, $8.5 million in cap space. This is a big number. Remember, they got to sign their rookies as well. My question is, is there any way to keep Zach Ertz? Like, is there is there no chance of keeping Zach Ertz? Maybe that's still on the table. It feels like it's not. It feels like the Eagles and Zach Ertz went ahead and went their separate ways a month ago whenever they confirmed that they were going to try to go ahead and find a trade partner or possibly release him. But I think the scenarios have boiled down to, one, a draft day trade. We didn't show it in the quote there, but NJ.com talked about how Philadelphia could take, like, pick 37 overall, your second-round draft pick, and Zach Ertz and trade back into the first round in order to go ahead and get... I don't know, Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota. If you can't get a wide receiver at number 12, possibly maybe a cornerback like Asante Samuel Jr. out of FSU. Those later first-round guys that are not going to be there at 37 overall, but you could kind of convince a team like Indianapolis or like somebody else who might want a tight end to go back a little bit into the second round from the first round and a Philadelphia trade-up. That way they have two first-round draft picks, one at 12 and then one a little bit later on. In terms of keeping Zach Ertz, I mean, I think I, I, I'd like to because the Eagles aren't getting Kyle Pitts at number 12 overall. And they already talked about how they'll have enough money to go ahead and technically pay him for at least one final season. What's one thing that young t uh, uh, quarterbacks really need? It's, it's, it's a security blanket, and Zach Ertz is the ultimate security blanket. He was Nick Foles' security blanket during the playoff run. He was Carson Wentz's best friend slash security blanket during his career in Philadelphia. I think Ertz staying in Philadelphia would be my ultimate choice. It just still feels like they are working towards at least trying to trade him, and the best option right now is trading him probably during the draft. However, if they don't trade him during the draft, expect around June for a chance at cutting him and letting him go sign with anybody. That way they free up some extra cap space, almost $8.5 million overall going into free agency, or sorry, going into training camp. That way if they need to sign anybody else, someone gets injured, then they got some more firepower to go ahead and do so. What do you guys think? Down below, what do you want to do with Zach Gertz? T down below for trade. C down, C down below for cut or K down below for keep. Remember, if you cut him, it's kind of the good faith thing of like, hey, we're going to let you go sign with anybody. So the Cardinals went ahead, or sorry, the Texans did with J.J. Watt. So that way you go sign with the Cardinals or anyone else you wanted to technically go ahead and be with. I want to keep him. But I think trading him would probably be the best option for Philadelphia overall. That way you get something in return. But let me know what you guys think down below in terms of T for trade, C for keep, or sorry, C for cut, or K down below for keep. Okay, let's get into some other stuff here regarding Philadelphia in terms of the NFL draft. There's a great article right now on NFL.com on the seven teams that must do well in the 2021 NFL draft. So I kind of went down, I clicked on it, and guess who was number six overall, which is actually the reverse, so it was pretty high. It was Philadelphia. They say they must do well in 2021 in order to go ahead and be successful in the future. And the main focus was that Philadelphia has 11 picks in the April draft. That's more than any team in the National Football League. The next closest right now is currently 10. And so I started to think to myself, how important is this draft for the Eagles? And as I started to think about it, they're right. This is an extremely important draft for the Eagles. And I think that they have to come out with a couple of good players. And I'll explain why more here in just one second. First, 
Let's go ahead and look at the NFL.com quote on the Eagles. And I think this kind of puts the pressure on not only Philadelphia, but really GM Howie Roseman in order to draft well. Quote, Eagles GM Howie Roseman is a realist. He seems to be well aware that his roster is past its 2017 peak. Eagles trade down with Miami in this year's draft, which netted an extra first round in 2022. Also to suggest he knows the rebuilding work won't be done this year. That said, it would make sense this April to do as much as possible to help Hurts concede. Coming off a season in which Philadelphia received receivers ranked 28th in the NFL and catches and 29th in receiving yards, with stalwart tight ends Eckert's likely headed out of town, it'll be crucial to find better playmakers in this draft, end quote. Now, before I give you guys my thoughts just on how important this draft is and just how many good players the Eagles need to pull out of this year's draft, make sure you guys are subscribed to Philadelphia Eagles now because we are building the best Eagle channel on YouTube, in my opinion, as we're trying to get to 20,000 subs here before the start of the April draft. And of course, leading up to that, we're going to have plenty of great Eagles news and rumors and plenty of coverage. So you guys want to stay tuned to the channel. We keep you guys up to date on everything happening regarding the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, my thought on this is that the Eagles need two stars out of this draft. Now, I know you say, Thomas, oh yeah, 11 draft picks and only two stars? No, 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 no. Listen, the Eagles need two legit stars, like stars, like starters that everyone in the National Football League knows who they are. I consider Zach Ertz a star. I consider, uh, hopefully, I mean, I consider Carson Wentz to be a star. I consider Brandon Brooks to currently be a star in Philadelphia. That caliber of player. Darius Slay caliber of player. A true starter in the NFL that will be a starter for at least the next, the next three or four years. A, a Fletcher Cox type player, right? Not necessarily a generational type talent, although we'd love that. They need to get at least two stars, and preferably the first round draft pick at 12 will turn out to be a star, something they have not been able to do well in the past couple of years, and then of course, maybe the second or third round pick, or maybe someone in the later round pops off. They've got to get two stars. Now, preferably, they get a lot of great players in this draft. You'd hope that you get at least half of these draft picks to be legitimate starters, or at least rotational players, but I think the hope right now in Philadelphia, out of 11 draft picks, which they'll probably package up and trade up in at least some part of the rounds, maybe the third or fourth round, I don't know, but they got to come away with at least two stars in this draft in order to to get the snowball rolling downhill in the right direction. I think Philadelphia has the potential to be a really good team this year. They have the easiest schedule statistically in the National Football League. They need help, though, at corner. They need help at linebacker. They need help at wide receiver. We've talked about this. And if they can get some stars, or at least a couple of good draft picks in this year's draft, it goes a long way for them being successful not only in 2021, but 2022 and beyond, going into, hopefully, the Jalen Hurts era in Philadelphia. I'll ask you guys this on Howie Roseman. What's your confidence level in Howie Roseman this draft? Like a scale 1 to 10. Your confidence level of Roseman and this draft, one being I'm not confident at all in him, which some people might not be, based on what we've seen, or a 10 being like, Howie Roseman's the best, he's going to do a great job. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Before we keep going... Again, hopefully the NFL is going to have full stadiums coming up in uh, August and September in 2021. However, I would assume you're probably still going to have to wear a mask when you attend the game. So why not pick up your official Eagles mask right now at chatsports.com forward slash Eagles masks. Some of them are up to 75% off. So you get them now, you wear them now because you still got to wear them whenever you're out and about most places like grocery store or whatever it is. But then you get them ready to go for hopefully returning back to the link here in 2021. So a ton of different options. Solo pack all the way up to four packs. There's styles, there's designs, you know, three pack right now, some of which are just $6.25. All are down below in the description box with the link, chatsports.com forward slash Eagles Mash. Just search that and you'll see all the great selections and sales right now. All right, Eagle fans, let's jump into some more news and rumors here. And this has to do with the Jalen Hurts jersey number change. I want to clear some things up on this because Twitter went kind of crazy when Jalen Hurts changed his number from two back to number one this week. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, why did he do that? Is he taking over the starting quarterback job? He's going to be quarterback one. Oh my gosh, so exciting. And then you just kind of read about it and you know history and you say, no, this is just technically Hurts' number really all along. So he, of course, switched to one this past week. He's going from two back down to number one. He previously wore two at Alabama, but he wore one at Oklahoma. And you got to think back to, well, why didn't he wear one when he got drafted? Well, think about it. Cam Johnston, the former Eagle punter, who they shouldn't have let go in free agency, but they did because he was really good. He previously wore one. So Cam was not going to give up number one to a rookie. So Hertz took number two to go back to his Alabama day. So it's not that big of a deal. It's not necessarily any sort of like, ooh, read into it. However, as NBC Sports points out, this is the first time any Eagles player that was not a punter or a kicker has worn the quarter, the uh, number one. We'll see that quote on your screen right now. Quote, number one has only been worn in Eagles history by kickers and punters. 
Happy Feller in 1971. You guys all remember him? I do not. Nick M Nick McMeyer in 1977 and 1978. Tony Franklin from 1979 through 1983. Gary Anderson in 1995 and 96. Matt McBriar in 2012. And Cody Parkey in 2014 and 2015. None of them ever attempted a pass as an Eagle. So you can kind of get a little excited there that, of course, the first time you get a number one, uh, in an Eagles jersey from a quarterback standpoint, we'll go ahead and be Jalen Hurts. Okay, my thought on this is, one, jersey changes are the worst. Because how many kids out there rush to go ahead and buy Carson, or sorry, from, from, from replace their Carson Wentz jersey with a Jalen Hurts jersey right after Wentz was traded just a couple of months ago? I mean, I bet you a lot of people went out and bought themselves a Jalen Hurts number two jersey. And now, guess what? It's completely irrelevant. I hate jersey changes. Now, I understand them, and I totally get why Hurts is doing this, so we're not really mad at him overall. It's just like, Geez, if you got a number two Hertz jersey, you gotta throw it away. Like it's useless. You gotta go out and buy another one, which maybe was the plan all along. But still, very frustrating for a lot of us to uh, purchase Jalen Hurts jerseys. So get your number one. But it is interesting. Think about Newton. Cam Newton wore one. You know, Kyle Murray wore one. Some good quarterbacks in NFL history have worn one. And I think Hurts is gonna look pretty darn good wearing the number one in an Eagles color and jersey. And I'm just pumped to see him get back out onto the football field and hopefully truly be quarterback number one. But I wanted to jump on here and just, just talk about how this is not any sort of drama there's no controversy here there's no there's no, there's no you know super read between the lines why did he switch numbers he's now go from quarterback two to quarterback one stop he just was he like wearing it at oklahoma and he couldn't wear it when he was drafted because of uh, uh cam johnston and now of course he's going to be able to go ahead and wear it all right eagle fans ultimately up for today here on today's philadelphia eagles news and rumor video on philadelphia eagles now plenty more upcoming this week so stay tuned for that it's also Monday. You may have noticed I'm wearing my uh, my Baylor Bears polo right now because we're in the national championship game tonight. So hopefully you're watching this before they play. If you if you are, root for them. If you watch it tomorrow and they won, give the video a thumbs up. If they lost, then just be sad because I'll be sad as well. Again, ultimately, I'm for today here on Photo of Eagles Now. I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.